Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good how are you? Very well, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Hold on, let me adjust the volume. I, can, I was hearing very well before. Okay, okay, sir. Yes. Some noise. I heard you very well before. Yeah, okay. I was a bit... Yeah. It's very, we're very happy to have you on this session. This is also your first Instagram um, interview. How are you feeling about that? Well, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting experience. Uh, I watch others, so it's uh, for you for that to also watch me today. <laughs> we received a lot of questions from people. The Guess they just one more. second. Let's fix this volume, please. Okay, you know, okay, it's something, okay. something all right with the volume. Sorry, please. Uh, it's fine. It was so good before. Yeah, so put it down. Yeah, when you just adjusted it, when it happened, it was very clear before. Okay. Right, let's go, Cassidy. Let's 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 go. Let's, let's get the show on the road. So it's very, very, very good to have you today. Uh, without you, I don't know anything that would happen to African entrepreneurs across the continent. Uh, so I'm just going to start right into it. It's been over a decade of empowering African entrepreneurs across all 54 African countries. We have, you know, transformed the lives of communities, of countries, and it all leads us down to one question. Why did you choose to become an entrepreneur? <laughs> why did I choose to become an entrepreneur or why did I choose to support entrepreneurs? No, why no, did that's I choose the first. So we'll start with why you chose to become an entrepreneur. No, I think uh, <laughs> right from uh, childhood is something, you know, what, growing up watching people around me, influences, family and co, is something that I thought was, uh, would be nice. And then uh, on my early day, early careers, I always uh, hope that one day I'll become, but you call it entrepreneur today, but those who use it as a businessman, I'll become a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> businessman meant being uh, an entrepreneur. So yeah, that's how it all started. And then, um, yeah, that's how it all yeah, started. Well. It's uh, influences around and, uh, and uh, people, is... my mom, my parents, my dad. Uh, my uncles, you know, and you see people drive like Mercedes 200, old Mercedes 200, old Mercedes 200 then, and they all business people say, wow, I'm going to be a businessman so I can drive my own Mercedes 200. Well, but, uh, well, yeah, that's how it all, uh, it all, it all, it all started. And then uh, as you grow up further, start going to school, start reading, you know, uh, autobiographies, what others have done, how others have succeeded, and then it's okay, uh, yeah. It helps to further validate that uh, early day childhood uh, type uh, aspirations. Uh, so yeah, that's all. And then yeah, venturing to it uh, now, okay, is the water. <laughs> well, that's all. That's how it all started. That's wonderful. I guess that also leads into our second question of, as to why you decided to start empowering African entrepreneurs. So now that we know why you chose to be an entrepreneur, why did you choose to empower African entrepreneurs? For me, it's uh, more about uh, um, the democratizing luck. It's more about um, thinking of myself, you know, uh, 20, 30 years uh, ago, and uh, ideas, dreams, aspirations that uh, if one did not have the opportunity, it would have been wasted, you know, a lot. So it's more like, okay. Uh, this time, uh, <laughs> you know, in the evolution of uh, life and man, you go through when you have to be able to eat three square, <laughs> eat, uh, <laughs> when you eat, eat like uh, oh, zero one one, then it's okay. How to eat. when I lose square, I'll try and eat uh, one one one. Then uh, all those things you didn't enjoy, wanted to enjoy, how to get them and get them. And so you get to a level where existing living was no longer uh, such uh, a difficult thing. 
and uh, it's like uh, how do I also help to create more prosperity, create more happiness around us because as I always say, um, anger, poverty, anywhere is a threat to every one of us everywhere. So, and also realizing that um, what counts is not the money in your bank account but the kind of impact you're able to create. What counts is not the number of billionaires you have or the impact we all collectively and individually are able to create that kind. So, that's how the whole idea uh, of inspiration came that, you know, maybe, not maybe, that one should do something. It's a question of what do you want to do? How do you go about it? And uh, at that time, people were looking at other things in the world, uh, education, scholarship, uh, hospitals, you know, roads, and that. Why do you that the best form of empowerment you can give to someone is to make someone an efficient man, they give someone the training and the resources on his or her own to become a self, uh, self, uh, self uh, sustaining, self reliant. And uh, that is how we chose entrepreneurship at a time so good and nice that everyone today talks about entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> It was not so, in 2010, it was not so, so common, but today everyone talks about it. But that's how the old was like, how do we get the upcoming Tony Lumelo, the young ones, the younger ones, you know, who are now where I was, say, some years ago, how do we help them fulfill their aspirations? And so to us, it was a question of capital support, but beyond capital support is mentoring is uh, sharing experiences, you know, um, hearing from these people frustrations that we all live with and in every day and giving them your perspective. Tell them if I manage to succeed, succeed in spite of all of this challenge, you too can succeed. It's, uh, to me, it's even more fulfilling, more rewarding than even capital. And also training, letting people know it's good to be successful, but when you're successful, how do you manage success? How do you stay successful? How do you go about navigate it? How do you even deal with challenges, you know? So those are the things we provide. So at the tenure of the for me, you know, people talk about the $5,000 non-refundable non -refundable, uh, capital we give to each of the 1,000 that we support at the foundation. But I, spend more, I think it's more about the education, the learning, the training, uh, the mentoring and the networking uh, platform that we create, the small exposure we give to people, uh, that's important, you know. So, yes, that in a nutshell is what drove the inspiration uh, uh, and the support, the need to support young African entrepreneurs. And to us, it's not just about supporting entrepreneurs in Nigeria, it's all across Africa because um, what a good <laughs> so, so Sam, we've been having this session for weeks now, and we've had alumni come on to talk about their experience. And it's just very interesting that almost all of them have ranked the mentorship they received above the $5,000. <laughs> it's true. Just to say how incredible it is and critical it is for entrepreneurs to have mentors and to just know that they are in the right path and they're well guided. And another thing that we talk about, or you talk about a lot, is about entrepreneurs being consistent and knowing that entrepreneurship is not a short journey, it's a long journey. It's a long one. It's a long journey, exactly. And it got us thinking around loyalty and how a lot of people at Hairs Holdings have stayed with you for a long time. Now, as a businessman, as a chairman of so many companies, <laughs> how do you... How do you ensure that loyalty? How do you manage, how do you manage that? You know, uh, for me, if I heard you very well, that a lot of people work with me, have stayed with me for a long time. Okay. No, no. You know, I think uh, it's a question of a uh, shared uh, destiny, mutual destiny. Uh, it's a question of uh, first you as a leader realizing that there's a limit to what you can do as a person mm -hmm. if you're not supported by the right people. It's for you as a leader to realize that uh, leadership and leading is about getting things done through others. And that uh, the secret to leadership success is about the uh, ability to assemble the right people and 
keep them around you, give them the latitude and space to do well, and then uh, listen to what they say, uh, correct them when necessary, and work as a family. And so human beings like to be respected, human beings like to be recognized, human beings like to be rewarded, and human beings also like even to be corrected when they are wrong. Not that weak leaders find they've got to correct people. No, they're not wrong in correcting people when they are wrong. But so for us and for me, I think uh, it's that realization earlier on in my career that uh, I just need the right people to succeed. Today, as chairman of S Odins, you know, with interest in different sectors of the Nigerian and African economy, from power sector to now oil and gas, you know, hospitality, real estate, healthcare, and financial services, people wonder how does one guy have the able to do this? But the truth is. I don't do it myself. In fact, most times, I don't even know when the law things are done. But the secret is that one has painstakingly assembled a great team. And the great team make me shine, make me look like I'm a whiskey that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so the, my advice to people always is spend time as a leader in assembling a quality team so that 50% or 70% of your job is taken off you. So I sit here in my office here, air condition office. But today, this morning, we have two fire and power plants in Nigeria. We have power plant in River State, Afam. We have power plant in the Delta State, um, Wari. And these two plants are generating massive electricity for the country, exporting electricity to the Benin Republic. And I'm here. I, I, I can't even remember when I visited the plants last. But things are working well because I have the right people who are accountable, who are responsible, making decisions and running these businesses uh, the way it should be run. We have in 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 uh, in uh, the hospitality business all the great things happening at the transport uh, PLC uh, because we have the right person and the right leadership. Uh, things things are happening. We have the oil and gas business, you know, we produce about 30,000 barrels of oil on a daily basis. So I don't even know where the oil well <laughs> <are> located. <laughs> but it's because we have the right, but at times it's funny because some of them say, can we get a time on your calendar to update you? And I'm like, um, uh, there's Power BI. So let me just use my part. Just put the information there. Let me read and know what's happening. So the truth is, yes, we... We, we believe in people, we invest in people, we create a community of friends and a community of, uh, of uh, people who share the same destiny, the same aspirations, and who know that as we succeed collectively, we also enjoy, <laughs> enjoy collectively. I think that is the secret. Human beings like to be respected, treated fairly, and also rewarded, recognized, you know, and, and, and corrected when necessary. For me, my people will tell you, as you know, it's only debit and credit. You do well, I give you credit. You don't do well, I give you credit. Instantly, it's an open ledger. But that keeps us, you know, so every one of us knows that it's not personal. It's, it's not personal, it's just to get the job done. And because of our overall higher commitment to Africa, capitalism and the whole philosophy of what drives us in the group, by improving lives and transforming the uh, society. So it's the, that higher purpose and calling plus the environment we all create that drives the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, affinity and friendship we all have. So, Chairman, when we told the world that we're going to be having an interview with you, we got millions of questions. But we also got millions of people wishing you a happy belated birthday. So I'd like to say on behalf of all the people that sent happy belated birthdays, um, but they also sent a lot of questions, which we're going to get into, to just get Go to ahead. this personally. Uh, the first question, what is the last book you read? The last book I read? Mm -hmm. Okay, let, this is a very interesting <laughs> question. And it's not just, I, I want to answer it carefully so that I want to encourage people. So to start with, there was a time in my career, in my life, that I used to read voraciously, a lot. And I just, and I said, read, I tried to, to mark, to learn, copy, and try to, to improve, you know, further based on the learning. 
But progressively, I've seen that, you know, so much to do, so much report to read, so many things that <laughs> one does not have that time again. But I'll show you something. Interesting. Let me show you something, you guys. Okay. This is my bag, eh? Mm -hmm. I'll show you a book I'm reading right now. And it's a read, actually. You know, you see it? What's it called? Yeah. You see it? Um, it's the other way around, so I can't see it. Okay, go ahead. Can you see it this way? No, I can see the print. Can you see it this That's way? Right. <laughs> it's uh, no it's uh, Nicole, Nicola Machiavelli, the prince. The prince. Uh -huh. right? The prince. So, I'm just, this, uh, my daughter is a uh, uh, London school that comes southern uh, political uh, politics and, and philosophy. So, we're discussing, and I, I had read this before. But, uh, but I thought I should read it again, you know, just to, to, to catch up. But basically, I read, um, I read a lot about, yeah, some of my followers, <laughs> they got it, they are writing. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole uh, um, Machiavelli, The Prince. It's quite interesting, interesting book, you know. I'm, I'm reading it again. So, yes. Um, that's the that's the one I'm reading quite, 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 quite currently. So <laughs> it's quite question. interesting. <laughs> the next quite inter but, but but the message is actually because for whoever asks when do you read your last book, it's um it's very good to read. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely busy now, so before I used to read a lot. For my best side, usually like books, I used to be a hobby that I'm. A habit that every night before I sleep, I'll try and read a chapter in the book. In fact, there's this book I read before that's so voluminous, uh, The House of Morgan. It's like this. Oh, I, I kept I, I, it's I almost a year. House of Morgan, yes. Every, I will read one chapter every night until I finish uh, uh, reading it. Now I don't have so much time again. And so what I do, I, I, I buy some books and I buy the edited, summarized version of some books just so I can oh. read you know, for knowledge. Because I say to myself, now that I'm active and in business, let me get all the ideas I can get, I can deploy. And not later when you're all retired and oh, that's when you have time to read, you get more knowledge, but you don't have the practicality you know, yeah. to, to implement all of those. So young people, please read, 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 read. Autobiography, autobiography. Like, Read about people. For me, I like fiction a lot. You know, a okay. lot. Fiction. You go to my website, you see quite a lot of books. But I also read about real life stories. So people who have succeeded. What they what they did to succeed, and trying to apply it to to oneself. And it's a good way of uh, of learning. So to the person who has a question, I hope I've answered his or her question. <laughs> question. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're going to laugh at the second question. But he said, "Why is your favorite color red?" <laughs> Why my favorite color? Okay, interestingly, interestingly, if you see me at a party, if you see me, those days we would uh, of nightclub. Now, now COVID has canceled nightclub, so we don't, <laughs> don't go out of the But if you see me at a nightclub, you see me black and black, black on 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 black, black, black before. Oh, not before, till now. But I'm sure life will come back, but I'm sure sooner we will start there going out again. But so, that is me. However, in the cop our corporate color, our group, our corporate color is red. You know, red depicts warmth. Exactly, warmth. You know, freshness. You know, fertility, yeah. strength, and so, and it, most importantly, that warmth. Because we are very warm in our hospitality business, we are warm in our uh, financial business, we are customer friendly. Customer. That's why it's important to us. So, in everything we do, is about that warmth, that friendship, you know, because, you know, you do business with those who are your friends, who you know, and, and that warmth helps, helps. So, our corporate color is red. It's bold. It's, it's bold. We are bold people. Yeah. <laughs> we are yeah. tenacious. We are audacious. <laughs> and by oh, the way, okay. young Africans must be bold. Must be bold and not be as timid as our poor parents were. We must be bold. That is what we live in. And... When you are in a place, let people identify your presence, know your presence, know your stepping. If red appears, people turn and look at the red. If I go somewhere my red time, you have to know. <laughs> I'm being frank here. Anyway, so tell them, yeah, the red is our corporate color. But when I'm out socializing, you likely see black on black. People always say, why black? 
black. Why black and red? Because, you know, I just like that color combination. Okay. But work-wise, corporate environment, corporate color is red. Yeah. Also, the next question was, how many red ties do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Who are these guys? Hey, man. <laughs> In fact, no, I don't blame those because even me, I can't. I don't even know. I, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. I just, I you know it's funny because I just okay, no more. You have enough red right, right? Then I go to a shop. I see. I just okay. Maybe I just pick this one. Yeah, I do have a couple. But you can see, this is not totally red. This is uh, this, uh, a bit of red or burgundy and uh, navy blue. So. It's, it's come different too. <laughs> uh, the next question was, what is your favorite sports team? Favorite? Uh, sports, sports, sports. Sports. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a tennis court here, but I don't know when I played last. <laughs> I, I love tennis. I love tennis. I love football too. I love to watch <laughs> I love to watch football play. When I was young, I was I, when I was like a secondary school, primary, not even secondary school, I was like a goalkeeper. And of course, we send we did send you to school to go and keep. Then you kill, you forget, you lose that. And today, people make billions from uh, from goalkeeping. I start saying, "Oh my God, I wish I pursued it." But when we look back, we thank God for what today is. But uh, yes, I do love football, but uh, long tennis. Because I play, you know, I'm not a pro, but yeah, we'll get back. And also, Chairman, you've been planking lately. Uh, you said that you started planking instead of, well, not instead of, but you've added it to yoga. So people ask, how many minutes can you plank for at a stretch? Kesi, they, you know, tell them they should look at you. You should, you should, you should tell them to go and look at your Instagram, <laughs> your Instagram to see how fit you are. How can I walk with someone who has sweet as sweet as Casey there and there? <laughs> it's just to strengthen the core here, the core, you know. Um, anyway, I wish we had time. I'll do some small planking here. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that, we'll do I do what I do at times depend on the, anyway, you know, again the lazy man's uh, uh, excuse of time. But I just try I can do like two minutes straight plank, just straight, then I do the side one like thirty seconds i turn this other side 30 seconds that is three minutes then i go back again i do like a minute then i come up a little bit so i try i try to do about five minutes but you no know, straight the tough one is that first two minutes yeah then you do the 30 seconds 30 seconds that is three minutes you go back again one minute then there's a the high there's a different type of plank it's a bit up then i do that for so then then uh, I, I, I'm okay. Wait, at times also I can do like this, no? No. Yeah, yeah, that's do right. this. Just all to keep time. But yes, I can do. Yes. I can do five, five minutes. Five, five minutes. But it's tough. That's but it's good. That's good. very interesting. Hopefully, hopefully I will develop it like uh, Casey. <laughs> so the other question that came for you was: At what age did you start your first business? My first what? Your first business, at what age did you start what your first age? <laughs> So, I don't know. I think, uh, is it? So, for advice of people, is uh, it depends on the route <laughs> you, you, you take to this. Some people just don't even, after primary school, they start business. Some after secondary school, they start business. Some after university, they start business. Some after university, I'm working for some time, they start business. I'm in that category, okay? Uh, but... Listen to your calling, you know, whatever you're passionate about today, you know, just okay. at some point, at some, whatever you're passionate about today, at some point, uh, embrace it, <laughs> embrace okay. it and, uh, and, 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 and kick off. So it's not mat mathematical or mechanical that at 20 you start or at 30 you start or at 40, 50. What's important is what is driving you, what are you passionate about, and how is your mind working on that, and, you know, level of preparation and co, and then uh, are you ready to take the plunge, you know, and, and, uh, and move. So, but some people start much earlier than some of us started, and uh, there's no 
hard and fast way. It must not be this way. It must not be at 20. It must not be at 30. It can be a combination of so many. Some people just say, you know what? I'm going to pause schooling. Let me just do this nice on my mind and continue. Uh, or some will just say, let me finish everything. My advice, you know, uh, one of my daughters is interested in it. You know, my advice is always get that basic education and then you can, <clears throat> you can, you can, you can, you can start. And uh, because when you start, uh, you know, once you get started and you're doing well, and almost everyone does well ultimately in business. The thing is, uh, are you resilient? Are you ready to withstand the storm? Because to come, all of us have had it. Are you ready? Uh, do you have the same power? Do you have the discipline? You know, I was talking with my daughter last night. She went to Dubai. And I'll share this because uh, part of what I talk about resilience, you know. Went to Dubai. Okay. And she, she, she said she wanted, I was going to go back to Nigeria. She said she wanted to come back with me because she had uh, her mock exam starting in the UK. So she came back with me to Lagos and she was reading, and then she went back to London with the open school, I think 8th of uh, February, there about. And the summary she did the exam, the result came out, or 8th of March, 8th of March, so the result came out, she did very well. So I was telling her, I said, I said, see, what did you learn from this? I said, three things, hard work, discipline, sacrifice. These three things, they go a long way. Once you're disciplined, once you are ready to make the requisite sacrifices, and once you're hardworking, success will come your way. It's almost in a bit. Of course, God is always a given. He's a factor. He's given. He's a factor. So all entrepreneurs almost always succeed. The issue is, is as you said before, right, in line with what I say, it's, uh, it's up and down. But if you're tenacious, if you're committed, resilient, hardworking, ready to make sacrifices, and stay disciplined and focused. Success will come. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, sir, for that. Um, so many other people ask about why you are called the Lion King. But I guess if they're watching this, they will know that the Lion is resilient, the Lion is courageous, the Lion is bold, and all the things that you have talked about. So I think that's a, that's a way to answer. And the Lion is agile. And yeah. the lion, you know, <laughs> the lion story is quite interesting. It's a big animal, very big, heavy, but extremely fast, especially when it's running to feed, to prey on something, it's extremely fast. And, you know, it moves in a very strategic fashion. And the lion knows how to take care of its cubs. You know, the lion, so it's um, all the, that resilience, you know, being calm, calculated, and uh, and then knowing when to strike, and striking at the right time, and going for juggler when you strike. <laughs> so that thing that uh, make the land the king of the <laughs> of the forest. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so, chairman, I know that you're very busy. The world knows that you're very busy. You're the chairman of Heads Holding. You're the chairman of United Bank of Africa. How do you manage work and life? How do you balance it? From this call, we know that you find it difficult to to lead as you used to. But how do you balance it? And you're very hands-on with fatherhood. You know, everyone knows about Oge and the boys and just how committed and invested you are in your life. Just how do you balance that? Because people are quite curious to know how you make it work. <laughs> I think the uh, work-life balance that they're calling now is extremely important. You know, um, for me, we just know that uh, as I say, you know, I'm, I didn't author this. Is from, I think uh, this saying from uh, Jane Collins. Uh, Jane, yeah, Jane Collins in the Good to Great book. He wrote about the genius of ants and the tyranny of all. So uh, yeah. life uh, is, about the, is about the genius of ants, making sure that you know, work does not suffer, and at the same time, your subscribe well-being as an individual, as a, a family man, as a member of society, does not suffer. So it's balancing all of this. You, your well-being, your health, your mental state, making sure you're good. If you're not fit, if you're not healthy, if you're not mentally balanced, 
you can't be productive to society, you can't be productive to mankind, you can't do anything. So that is important. Family, bringing it all together, you know, uh, it's funny. <laughs> my, my family traveled to, travel last night. And today, I was telling someone that uh, it was like night vigil. <laughs> for, uh, when, from when they left for the airport, you know, to when they landed home, everything. Because, you know, every compartment has to work and be, um, has, to, has to be comfortable and happy. Because those are the things that even make you more productive. And if every there's harmony across board, and then the work has to. So I know when to power down, I know when to, when to be fair. I kind of know my system, my body and co, you know, when you work too hard, you know, when you take it easy, you know, when you need to exercise, you know, when, when you need to, like, after this meeting, I've, I've had a very busy day. If someone has said, I want to talk to you, I want me to say, uh, let this break, <laughs> let this break calm down because it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been stress since morning. So yes, I think uh, it's, that balance is good in life, in everything we do. That balance is always very, very, very good. One should not suffer or that. The key thing is good to have your, your time. It's good to also have time for your job and everything. They all must go together, and that's what I, what I preach. At times, laziness also makes us to, to define some of this balance in a different way, you know, laziness in a different way. So, I, I, but I preach it. I, I, I support it. I think people should, should live a balanced uh, life. Like at times on Saturday, you might see some Saturdays when I'm, I might just decide to sleep and wake up 5 p.m. <laughs> from the night before. <laughs> I let you, okay. I've, I've shown my body. I need to. Balance and. Uh, it changes from like there nobody can define and say it must be like this, it must be twenty hours, the ten hours, the five hours. Don't find your balance. What gives you comfort? What gives you what distresses you and makes you at peace with with yourself and so this was important to me. That's a that's a very wonderful answer. Thank you so much, Chairman. Thank you. For me personally, that's a very wonderful answer. And the next question, and I'm going to try to wrap up we've got so many questions. And we've got a lot of questions about your mentor. People are curious to know who is Tony Ebuwele's mentor. And if it's possible for someone like you to still have a mentor. So, do you have a mentor? <laughs> <laughs> L listen, I do. I do have uh, mentors. I also have role models. And I also have you know, people have influenced me greatly. And, I, and I'll share this. So my biggest uh, mentor, uh, someone who, you know, I've talked about him several times, you know, is, uh, and if you see at SOD, you see a, a room we call the Panigo Room, you know. I'm there right now. <laughs> yeah, you're there in Panigo Room. <laughs> that is uh, that is a man that uh, is more like you talk of Nostradamus. He said, the man who saw tomorrow. So that is a man that uh, saw what I did see in myself, beyond my parents, you know, who saw me, gave me the career opportunity, you know. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if I, have time, if I share that story again. So, anyway, so gave me the career opportunity, and, uh, and uh, it's never been the same since then. And to date, you know, from time to time, we touch base. And uh, we taught this, and um, and uh, I I run things by him, or he says uh, to me, "How are you doing? How's your family? How are you and that?" Then we we'll talk about issues. So yes, I do. However, I, I do have quite people who have influenced me in different ways. And you'd be amazed and shocked at different people. So you know, I I like. Uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Not only that, I like his music, but you know. Michael Jackson was a perfectionist. He got, you know, he was talented, but he didn't just rely. In fact, to me, people say he was talented. Some thought he was born that way, but I think he worked hard for it. He worked hard, you know, and if you saw his movie, his um, films, you saw how his level of preparation before an outing. Uh, look at This Is It. I don't know if you've seen that movie. This I've is seen it. it. 
I see the sheer amount of preparation for that tour. And if you succeed, if you lead for that tour, and of course, I had bought the ticket for it by the refunder the month later. If you lead to perform that on that what global tour, it was preparing, people would say, Oh my God, wonderful guy, so talented. But look at how he was practicing twice every day, hours, yeah. hours every day for that uh, uh, world tour. And so, you know, that again teaches you about hard work. No two ways to success. You, go, you have to invest time, make sacrifices, stay focused and disciplined, and work hard, and you see the outcome. That was what Michael Jackson. So for me, I learned so much in him. He was so meticulous, you know, very organized, uh, disciplined. Excellence. And what, an excellence about what was important to him. So uh, I, I, I learn a lot from even at time when I'm lazy, I'm saying that I say, come on, what oh, Michael Jan do is a concert. I pick up, you know. So that's then Steve Jobs, you know, um a great guy, you know, great guy, great guy, great man of ideas. Can you see a human being how one human being has changed the whole world? All this digital world war live today, you know, and everything that is happening. A man who lived, and you know, for me, that is the ambition. A company he founded after his death became first the first company in the world to cross the one trillion market cap, one trillion US dollar after his death. Not even while he was alive. That is called building to last. That is the company even grew more in prosperity and and value long after his death, you know, even human being. And in addition, look at the yeah. toys. Look at, you know, before, all these gadgets were not supposed to be fine because they, they provided you a tool to walk. Not forget our finesse, just, just the work. But it's changed all of that in Apple. You know, if someone told me I want to set up a company and I'll call the company Apple, I'll say, are you mad? What can you Apple? <laughs> <laughs> Look at today, what success has brought life to Apple. So yeah, I like it. I like, of course, Big Gates a lot. You know, you know, great thing. You know, people use their brain. You know, in spite, in spite of challenges, who make a different mankind and humanity. So yes, I and of course I love Bob Marley. <laughs> the <it> musicians, <laughs> because. You know, oh, he, he lived, you know, two years ago, before pandemic, I flew to Jamaica. I flew okay. to Jamaica. I, I wanted to to step on the soil. In fact, Samachi was with me, Samachi Obong. We went to Jamaica. I wanted to step on the soil, the ground that produced where that man lived. I went, I got to his bedroom, I went around it. I, okay, when I went, the second time I went, Samachi and Obong didn't go with me because the first time we went was a weekend. They said we couldn't enter. So I planned another trip to go to Jamaica <laughs> so I can enter his house. <laughs> and I entered his house. So, you know, because for me, these are great people, philosophers who lead ahead of their time, and which is the case. Great people I never understood in their own time. As long as I did. But Mali songs still a hit, just like Fela in Nigeria. You know? yeah. So those are great people. So for me, it is uh, admiration for their brain, their ingenuity, the fact that they live ahead. Of their, of their time. And so, and this is what I say to you guys and my colleagues and also to the rest of Africa, uh, young ones in part Parkland, Africa, let's keep the passion alive. Whatever you're passionate about, take it to the next level. That's what makes great individuals. That will make great uh, people. If you look at the big companies in the world today, the IKEAs, the Benetton Group, all great, even G, all great companies started from one man's idea, you know, one man's idea. But even after the man is gone, the idea continues. People always take it for that. And that happens because of the foundation you put in place when you are alive. So there's a lot for us to learn. And the sky, I believe, is the limit for us. Our young ones must read, as you said, they must embrace hard work, discipline, um, professionalism, integrity and above all, be ready to make sacrifices and stay resilient even when you face the turbulence. It's natural of life and business in particular. Yeah.
So, Chairman, I have two more questions. Uh, okay. I thought that was wrong, but go on, go on. I'm having so much fun talking to you. I always enjoy talking to you. Um, this question, I left it to the end because it was one of my favorite questions. People ask about your love for corn. <laughs> 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 and because I myself, I love corn. So I said, I'm going to leave this question for the last. Chairman, why corn? And how do you like your corn? It, it, it's so funny. First, how I like it is simple. I just love it, boy, corn with, uh, with salt. You know, at uh, HH, you know, uh, Gloria, if you ask Gloria, Gloria will tell you. <laughs> She's not as insurance, which is our new insurance, uh, insurance uh, business, you know, where we want to create a new level of insurance experience for people. So at S Insurance, at uh, HA, before she went to S Insurance, Gloria Boycott arranged that con immediately. <laughs> I don't even know where they get the fresh con, but yes, uh, we get it, we get it. I like it boiled uh, with salt, and then uh, I eat it. And then uh, at times I eat it there, you know, uh, and all coconut. <laughs> coconut. But the truth is, uh, I think I've not eaten corn now since maybe September. October oh. last year, uh, just small human discipline. I just said, okay, enough, enough, enough. Let me, <laughs> let me lose some weight. <laughs> so I stopped uh, eating, but I'll resume. I'll resume gradually. When I go back again, I'm not sure to be as crazy as I used, I'd be as crazy as I used to be. Before I could stop, I remember once I was coming back from Senegal. It's very funny and ironical. I went to Mosebe to see the president of uh, Senegal. The president uh, hosted us. We had, I think, Bola and Mosebe and I, I think. The poison hosted us. We ate the so-called popular uh, Senegalese uh, wolof, uh, jollof, wolof, uh, Senegalese jollof rice, mm -hmm. and you would think that who ate presidential uh, palace and everything. <laughs> and we flew three hours from Senegal to Nigeria, and just driving, leaving the airport on that airport stretch, I saw this rooster come. Very God, COVID has postponed. <laughs> you need to see what this is on the side of the road. So I stopped immediately and bought my back. I think Bola it was, took a video. I didn't even know she was filming <laughs> a video of me buying corn on the road. So she now, she now sent it to me later. I thought that was so cool that I shared it with the world, okay? And I, that's been, I think, my biggest video like so far by, by my follower. I like corn a lot, but um, it's just that at some stage, you know, and I was so crazy about it. So I'm happy that I'm not as crazy as I was. But still there, still there, still there. You should be my biggest trick. Still there. Uh, I love color well, so I completely understand you. So, yeah. Is there two questions? What was the last one? That's one. What was the other one? So the last one, that's what I was coming to say. It's the... Corn is sweet. It's, uh, it's very sweet. That's the golden question. Chairman, if you had $5,000 when you were starting your business, what would that have done for you? Wahala. <laughs> <laughs> Wahala. Oh. Uh, that is a tough question. So, first is, uh, it depends on the kind of business, <laughs> the kind of business uh, you want to do. I think uh, what's important first is uh, your passion, your calling, what you want to do. But 5000 is a lot. 5000 naira dollars today in Nigeria is about 2.5 million naira. Uh, 2.5 million naira. Uh, depends on the kind of business. There's a lady called Mama Money. Well, she's a TF beneficiary, one of the TF entrepreneurs. You know, she, I recall one day she came to our office. She to, to give testimony about how the little support the Tony and Miller Foundation gave her has uh, helped uh, grow her business. And I think my two daughters were in office that they were doing the internship uh, to my daughter. So, uh, I called them to the meeting, and the story was so moving that all of us started donating, give, not donating, but investing. That reminds me, please, someone should tell me my money to, to come and give my statement of account. Let me know, <laughs> let me know how, much, how much I had, the investment I made have been. So we, I think some of my daughters, I gave some money, I can't remember, maybe one million, my daughters gave some hundreds, some staff also at HH gave them. And... We gave her to support her business for that. And I don't think all we gave her was up to 2.5 million naira. She's into this um, micro lending. She gives money to like women and co to support their business. So that 
it's one of the things I can do because you know I said I was in finance. I'm, I'm in finance, so I would like okay, this two point five million naira. I give you. I support your business. You pay me back. I give you. Pay me back. You pay me back. I make room for some uh, defaults, and I grow from from that. And I can. There's a lot you can do, but it's just the scale, the scope, you know. And I, I, I like. I like people who start small and 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 grow very big. All of us are small. You just start one small business. I see how it grows, and you move forward. And quite time, when people want to start to grow, they're so big. I know uh, they fail, and when they fail, it's, it's usually very very serious. So five thousand dollars depend for me today. It might be different, but at some point in time in the past, uh, five thousand dollars was uh, that two point five million naira can can change my world, and I know it can change the world for so many other people. So it's uh, not so much what I can do with five thousand dollars, but really, if it was a question, so they said, well, what can you do with five thousand dollars? That two point five million. One of the things I will do, I will do that lending. I will say, okay, technology is changing the world today. Technology, I might just look for. I'm not a techie, so I might, but I'm fairly. I'm not a digital uh, <laughs> novice. But I can look for one, two, three people. I say, do you have ideas and that? I have some money. Can can I support your your ideas so that we can create something with these ideas that you have? You know, I can craft souls, I can I can bring people together and say, okay, let's do something. Let's one million, nine, two million, and I don't manage it. If you look at how big and the Steve Jobs started, which is where you can see how they started in the garage and that with five million I can create something. Uh, two point five million I can create something. Maybe not necessarily my own idea because I don't know I'm not so uh, talented in that space, but I can bring people together and say let you know, I mean I know how to bring people together to work and create value. So I can do that. But what would I have done then? I don't know. <laughs> so then, but today, maybe I'm thinking different. But five million, five, two point five million, I can help someone. Ali, prove your concept and make it uh, and make it uh, sellable to others to, to, to invest. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chairman. This has been lovely chatting with you. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for taking us into your world. Um, everyone who joined, they have more questions, but I'm going to let you go because I know you've had a long day <laughs> and I'd like you to, you know, take off your time, relax, and just start your work. I took off my time now? <laughs> <laughs> no, not now, not now, not now, not now, not now. But thank you, thank you. They want me to take it off now? Okay. <laughs> it's my, it's my... It's my it's my last meeting. If they want me to take it off now, they can they can, they can, they can see it. <laughs> they, can, they can see it. Uh, they can see it. Uh, tell them that uh, I think uh, it's been nice, you know, uh, entertaining those questions and uh, and uh, and uh, I do actually like to share. Uh, anyway. They should wait. Um, the, I'm, I'm, doing a, I'm doing a book, uh, My Life Story. Uh, I think uh, I'm sure by the grace of God, latest next year, we will uh, have it in, uh, in the bookshop. So people will, people will have uh, the, the opportunity. Tell them this, I should remove my time. Not only have I removed my time, I've ruined, I've ruined my, can you say I've ruined, I've ruined, I've ruined my sleep. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I wrote my sleep, but uh, I wish there was life and return to normal. Then I would have invited people to, to say, okay, let's go, let's go and party tonight and have drinks. But really, I think um, it's, been, it's been interesting chatting um, with younger Africans. I think uh, we all have a... Especially my friends who are more, a lot more endowed, you know, than others. So please, let's give a happy hand to others. You know, every one of us uh, at some point in our career development uh, got a happy hand. I got one. Chibango gave me the opportunity to work uh, for him, and that was a starting point. That gave me the opportunity to realize my potential, to prove myself. Cool. So we, it can be even giving people $5,000 or $1 million to, to do what uh, they, they are passionate about. 
uh, for me, collectively, that's how we can transform uh, and leave this world a better place than we met. I believe that uh, what counts at the end of the day is the legacy that we leave behind. What counts at the end of the day is not the money we have in our bank accounts. What counts at the end of the day is not that we are billionaires or not. What counts is the impact that we make, the life we touch, the helping hands we create. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, you, sir. Uh, conduct this chat. I think you 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 have a way of relaxing and uh, making me talk. <laughs> I'm not sure I've spoken like this in a long, in a long time. <laughs> yeah, but Thank thanks you. Uh, to you, uh, uh, so much in Kem uh, Adeshola. You all, you all rock, and you. Uh, you. and uh, our lady also. Um, Thank you. Our lady. Thank you. Uh, What's our lady's name? Um, Ada, Adaku. You Adaku. all, uh, and uh, Clary, of course, you all are great people. You all make this uh, work we do seem uh, seamless and, and simple. Thanks Thank so much, sir. and have a good, uh, a good weekend. You too. Thank you so much, sir. So we are still receiving applications for the Tony Element Entrepreneurship Program till March 31st. You can register on www.tefconnect.com. The portal closes in five days. You'll be sure to tell your friends, your families, people with business ideas or existing startups can apply. You have to be 18 years and above. We are receiving applications from all sectors. So be free, don't, be, don't feel limited. And like um, our chairman said, be bold, be resilient, trust yourself, be ready to fight for that thing that you want to achieve. It's all possible, you have to put in the hard work. And it begins from registering on um, tfconnect.com. Thank you all so much and enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.